Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is February 24th, 2024. Let's talk about a couple of matches that I had uh, handicapped uh, on my premium site here. Um, let's talk about what went right. Let's talk about what went wrong. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, a lot has been said about Nakatani, right? Junto Nakatani. And he delivered the KO yesterday, right? He did it inside of the 10 and a half rounds. Let's make a few points here. The original line was too rich. He's fighting a guy who has beaten Denier, who has also gotten a tie with Jerwin and Kayas, right? He was fighting Alejandro Santiago. The minus 962, way too rich. Nakatani, who I understand, has now won titles in three rate divisions. In my opinion, is a little bit overrated, right? You can be an excellent fighter and still be overrated. Um, let's talk about what I liked in the fight. He has an A-level straight left hand. He's a southpaw. That's the punch that initially dropped Santiago. Right? That straight left is concussive. He has one punch knockout power. He also looks like a spectacular athlete. He moves, he has a wide stance, but he's able to move around the ring. You didn't get the feeling he's just a slugger. You didn't get the feeling against an athletic opponent, right? A guy who's 5'3", who can move a bit and who has fast hands. You didn't get the feeling that Nakatani was at a disadvantage in terms of his reaction time in terms of his athleticism. Also, I like the fact that the second knockdown isn't his straight left. It was a right hook. In other words, this is a guy who can knock you down with either hand, right? Let's talk about what I didn't like and why I would still take the plus 585 hedge part of the play, right? I had Alejandro Santiago at a plus 585, simply to win the fight. That's how, to me, mispriced the fight was. I understand Santiago lost, but folks, this was not that lopsided a fight. Um, the problem with Nakatani, why I'm not going to put him on the very short list that I have of the very best in the sport, Right? Why I'm not going to place him with Nioa Inoue as the very best in the sport. And understand, there's a chance that Nakatani might fight Inoue down the road. Right? It's simply because you have a guy who's several inches, four inches roughly or so, taller than his opponent. And he gives away his height. Folks, it was disappointing to me. Right? Tall guy, athletic, why is he bent over? In my opinion, he has the wrong center of gravity. At times, his head is at the same level as Santiago's head. Also, um, the beginning of the fight, you're in Nakatani's home country. Nakatani has the bigger KO percentage. Right, folks, the first few rounds of this fight are very low volume. Now, I have the fight in my favorites folder. You want to take a look at it. It's the Japanese broadcast. You want to take a look at it while you can, while it's posted. Right, understand, the early rounds of the fight had a certain feel to them. It was a Deontay Wilder feel, where you got the feeling that Nakatani... Um, who comes across as more athletic than Wilder, 
Malkatani was very cautious, very low volume. It's as if he didn't trust himself to try to establish a jab, to try to use his height, his reach, the fact that he's in front of home country fans to win the slow rounds. Now I'm sure in part because Nakatani is very popular, in part because he was the greater than 9 to 1 favorite in the fight. He went off at a minus 962. I'm sure judges aware of the power structure in boxing gave Nakatani rounds where there was little activity. But let's just say it wasn't like he went out and earned the rounds. Right? I thought both fighters were surprisingly low volume early on. Right? Let me also say too that Nakatani's a southpaw. Um, you thought he would shoot a jab just to let the other guy know, look, you're going to have to work your way into the pocket. Southpaws have an advantage, in my opinion, in fights against orthodox fighters because a southpaw is accustomed to facing orthodox fighters. Right? The novelty part of the matchup is the orthodox fighter trying to figure out what to do with a southpaw. So when Alexander Usyk against an Anthony Joshua um, has fought a lot of righties in his career. Let's say that an Usyk had fought more righties than Joshua had fought lefties. Now here you have the bigger man, right, with the bigger punch, that straight left, always looms in the background. He's a southpaw. I was surprised he couldn't riddle uh, Santiago, who's cautious, right? It's not like Santiago is desperate to get inside, is channeling Joe Fraser and is bobbing and weaving and you have to actively keep him outside. No, Santiago's cautious early. So I was surprised that Nakatani wasn't able to establish a jab, in my opinion. Right? So I was a little bit disappointed by his volume. Right? So let's just say those are the things that stood out to me. I get the feeling that a veteran fighter, which is what Nioa in a way is at this point, let's remember he himself has beaten Denaire, um, is going to know that he needs to figure out and address Nakatani straight left. Right? Um, understand, this KO was of the really one-punch variety. I know it's a multiple KO fight. But it's Nakatani straight left landing and dropping Santiago, who up until that punch is completely lucid. It's not like Santiago has, has been dealing with a Larry Holmes level jab, is battered, um, you know, is spent, can't get inside because the other guy has this jab um, and is being outworked. You don't get that theme at all. In fact, you get the other theme. And this is something that struck me in both of these fights. Santiago, the round before he gets dropped, is on his front foot backing up Nakatani. And I didn't get the feeling that Nakatani had an advanced back foot game. I know I'm sounding hard here. Look, Nakatani is a three-time world champion, three-division world champion, and is an unbeaten fighter who delivered the KO. Right? But understand, it's really the one punch variety it's that left hand that diminishes santiago right santiago hits the canvas hard he's diminished then of course nakatani at that point knows he has a diminished opponent in front of him he's able to run across the ring and finish the show right but he did not systematically break down and beat up santiago before the knockout so here, we won on the under 10.5 rounds. 
right? Rather than pay a minus 962 on Nakatani simply to win, we instead got the under 10 and a half rounds and got a plus 129, right? Folks, something is wrong here. When you have two guys with a 50% and greater KO ratio, right? You have Nakatani who's knocking people out. And you're getting greater than even money on a under of a very high over under, 10 and a half rounds. Let me just say, my favorite part of the bet still, and it lost, did not cash, was the plus 585. Right now, this fight ends in the middle rounds. I want people to focus on the round before the conclusion of this fight, right? Santiago starts to back up Nakatani. Nakatani is not, in my opinion, outboxing him during the slower action. I thought Santiago, who was not diminished until he gets hit with that straight left, was very much in this fight. I still consider the plus 585, which we lost on, on Nakatani, excuse me, on Santiago simply to win, to have been the best part of the parlay. Now let's talk about a fight I lost on. And I'm bitter about it, right? <laughs> Just food for thought. The Takuma Inoue stoppage of Jerwin and Cajas was really peculiar. Right? I'm not saying there's anything untoward in the fight. Um, in a way, lands an excellent right hand to the body. Right, Liver shots can disable you even when you're conscious. Right, Think Bernard Hopkins against Oscar De La Hoya. Go back and look at that fight. Right, A liver shot will take away your legs and not give you the opportunity to get off the canvas for more than 10 seconds. Here, and Cajas is so hurt that even after the referee stops the fight, and Cajas could not get off the canvas. But here's the fight I saw, and you tell me if I'm right here. The bet I had suggested was, in a way, by decision. I did not think, in a way, could get a stoppage against Cajas, right? Who, until this fight, had never been stopped. In a way, by the way, going into this fight, only had four stoppages. The bet I was suggesting was, in a way, by decision, which did not happen, hedged with and Cajas by stoppage. Now, the fight I saw had, in a way, off to a great start. Folks, he's a great boxer. Right? A lot of head movement. He's not running. He cannot box you in the pocket. This is the opposite of the Nakatani fight. Here you had a guy who, if there wasn't a knockdown in the round, was going to outbox and Cajas. But then the dynamic started to change. And Cajas, who's flat footed, who doesn't have the hand speed of in a way, started to figure out that he needed to target not in a way's head. Because that moved too much. In a way, he's a master at leaning away from punches. No, the secret to beating In a way was through the body. Body shots. That's the secret. So, what started to happen? The pattern that started to emerge several rounds into the fight was... In a way, coming out, winning the first minute of the round, right? He's too slick. He comes out. He's staying away. He's then in the pocket. He's landing shots. He's too fast-handed. But then you notice that Kaha started landing withering body shots that started to slow down in a way. As in the Nakatani fight, here I want people to focus on the round before the stoppage. Right? In a way, again, at the time, only four KOs career is getting riddled with body shots. 
is getting slowed down to his body. Right? And Kahasu took a while, took too long to figure out that the headshots weren't working on in a way. Finally solves the puzzle in the middle rounds. You thought, okay, in a way is going to have a hard time surviving here. He's ahead in the fight because he's he sweeps the early rounds. But you see that he's getting drained by the body shots. His legs aren't what they were in the first, second, and third round. Right? So literally, the round right before the KO, arguably, is Ancajas' best round. So you can imagine, since my bet was, in a way, by decision, Ancajas by stoppage. And by the way, the Ancajas by stoppage was going off at a plus 566. The in a way by decision was a minus 137. Right? You can imagine, I thought I was well positioned here. Well, here again, we get a one punch knockout. And Cajas is completely lucid right before the liver shot. Right, folks? He's 100%. He's getting beaten. He's getting outboxed. I myself had in a way ahead at that point. By the way, I have the video in my favorites folder here on YouTube. You want to look at that video. The commentaries in English, the chances of it being taken down are even greater than the Nakatani video. Look in my favorites folder for this fight. But just understand, this was not a fight where Ancajas is gradually fading. No, he's coming on. He's in against a guy who up until this point didn't look like he could hurt him. Well, you know the rest. Boxing can end on one punch. Here, in a way, lands a right hand to the liver area of Ancajas. Ancajas goes down, and folks, he's badly hurt. This is that delayed reaction knockdown. Right, he gets hit, he stops throwing punches, he pauses, then he goes down to the canvas. You can see the referee is actually trying to give him an opportunity to get up. The referee is right by him. He's doing the right thing by making sure he knows the count. Folks, the ref could have counted to 25. And Cajas could not continue. One punch KO by a boxer who, before the one punch, only had four career KOs. So we lost on both sides of that play. The problem I have with Inouye is the fact that it looks to me like opponents going forward are going to know I need to target his body. Let's just say Nakatani, though, and Nakatani has ring coverage, is going to have to be more active against Inouye than he was against Santiago. Right, so for me, Nakatani is promising. Right, but he seems to be getting by on the fact that he's taller than most fighters. He has an A-level straight left. He's a southpaw. And he's charismatic. Right, I did not see a guy who knows how to use his height Let's just say Vitaly Klitschko, the tall guy who can lean backwards. Ali, who was taller than Sonny Liston, who could lean backwards. You would notice and be aware of their height and their length more than you would Nakatani, who's 5'7", but yet at times had his head at the same level of 5'3", Alejandro Santiago. Let me say this, too, about Santiago. He's going to be a live underdog in his next fight. 
right? I think he would give Naoa Inouye, and granted, there's the weight gap, but I think he would give Naoa Inouye a tougher fight than Nakatani, right? Nakatani, um, like Anthony Joshua, let me pick another big name in boxing, uh, is a bit cautious. I know Joshua was not cautious in his last fight against Otto Wallen, right? But understand, we've seen Joshua fights, the Alexander Povetkin fight, for example, where Joshua is cautious early. He has great power in both hands, but he's not a guy who comes in even with the home crowd advantage and the punching power advantage. He's not a guy who comes in and says, okay, look, you know, the guy I'm fighting doesn't have my power, doesn't have my size. Let me come in and use my height advantage, use my reach advantage, use my power advantage to close the show early. Or to, at a minimum, let the guy know, hey, you're here in danger. Force the other guy to be back foot. Now here, Santiago's back foot, not because of Nakatani. Right? Nakatani, who has dynamite in his left. Right, is cautious, like Joshua. Like Joshua, too, he doesn't have the confidence to lean backward. Right, I want people to look at how Vitaly Klitschko tried to avoid Lennox Lewis's shots. Folks, Lewis, bless puncher, like Joshua, hellacious right hand. Right? You'll notice in that fight, Vitaly Klitschko, who understood that Lennox Lewis was the heavyweight champ, that he needed to do more than Lewis to dislodge the belt. Right? Vitaly Klitschko comes in, and folks, as Lewis is throwing big shots, Vitaly Klitschko is leaning back. Right? Klitschko is ready to deal in the pocket and he's ready to use his height. Also understand, that Lennox Lewis, Vitaly Klitschko fight, it's Klitschko who wins the early rounds. Right, Lewis makes a bit of a comeback. We can argue over whether it was enough of a comeback. That fight ends on cuts. But understand how audacious that performance was by Klitschko, he comes in against a hard-hitting heavyweight champion, and the attitude is, hey, I'm here to trade. You know, I'm in front of you, but you're going to have to reach to find me. I'm throwing home run shots. I'm here to take you out. We didn't see that in this Nakatani fight against, let's say, a guy who I like Santiago, but he's not Lennox Lewis in terms of size and punching power, in terms of the risk of getting knocked out. Right here, Nakatani, unlike Lewis, right? That Lewis fight against Klitschko takes place in Los Angeles, not the UK, where Lewis would be the home fighter. Right here, you have Nakatani as the home fighter. By the way, folks, he's not that young. He's on the other side of 25, right? He's fighting at 118 pounds, a division that's not that kind to older fighters, right? Bantamweight. Uh, and Cajas is practically an old man at 32. Just food for thought. And, you know, let's just say Nakatani with the big left hand right, with the height advantage, with a tentative Santiago, right, Santiago, this is not Joe Fraser, first round against Ali, first fight, right, no, Santiago's outside, he's mindful of the power, and let's just say, I didn't even think Nakatani established a jab early, Right then, the fact that he's leaning forward against the 5-3 guy, why would you do that? We'll see how it turns out 
just keep in mind the perspective here. Nakatani, of course, three division champion, unbeaten fighter, wins the fight by KO in the middle rounds against a hard to KO Santiago. Right? He got the job done. Let's just say I didn't see the skills that would have me suddenly place him in the discussion with names like Canelo, uh, Crawford, and Naoa Inouye. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Uh, hit on a plus one, uh, 29 in the first fight. Um, split, you know, very mild profit in the first fight. Lost in the second fight. That's the summary of my day. Let me hear from you your analysis of both of these fights. Thanks for stopping by.